Hello guys and welcome to the Pro Dota Cup by Smashcast TV. We are here in the grand final of this beautiful Pro Dota Cup American version between the teams of Wheel Wreck while Whistling and Thunder Awaken. Thunder Awaken that comes to this final through the gr the winner's brackets, meaning they have a one game advantage, which thanks to our stupid admin is not shown here, but it's okay. We'll get it back <laughs> next time. And uh, Wheel Wreck while Whistling will have to win three games if they want to beat Thunder Awaken. Thunder Awaken only having to beat them twice. We'll see uh, what the draft has for us today. But of course, before we do so, allow me to present... Our sponsors for today, which are XBet, these guys make this tournament possible. If you guys want to try live betting on matches on the Pro Dota Cup, I do suggest you try XBet. And if you actually use the code BOUNTYX, you get 100 your euros free on XBet. So it's a nice deposit to start off on your betting. And what a better time to start than on Thunder Awaken versus Real Wreck while whistling. Great times. That said, guys, before we uh, analyze the draft, allow me to present myself. My name is D Swordfish. I'll be your caster for today and tonight for this grand final. We'll have a ex we'll have a, actually a pro player joining us. Slash Strike, how are you doing, my friend? Doing great. Excited to be casting this uh, grand final best of five series. And uh, yeah, draft underway. We already see a lot of disables picked up by both teams. Like two heroes with tons of stuns. Like the support duo, most likely. Uh, Pretty much definitely for Thunder Awaken, and I mean, the Sand King could be an offlane, but uh, generally we see that hero position for as well. So, yeah, pretty standard, just uh, not revealing their cores, not revealing the game plan. And yeah, both of these support duos are just able to set up kills. And when you have this many disables on your supports, that kind of allows you to pick these uh, cores that, you know, offer different stuff. You don't necessarily have to have a stun, so. But it's really too early to tell anything these teams are gonna do do have some uh nice nice uh mid domination though by thunder awaken if you assuming that both are positioned for sanking and get that thunder awaken yeah. playing a bit better more versatility there because the earth spirit's really better yeah the... it really sand king is not bad as a roamer either though for the mid lane it really kind of depends on the the mid heroes themselves uh who's gonna be more effective um, of course, the Earth Spirit uh, does kind of deny a little bit some of these more slippery picks, especially combined with Rubik. You know, heroes like, um, well, Puck is already banned, but you know, these slippery heroes a bit harder to pull off uh, against the instant silence, instant lift, instant stun. Like Quap, for example. Yeah, yeah. See what the, the third pick is. Probably the offlaner. Oh, wow. No! Okay, so they pick up the Quap themselves. What do you think? All right. Quap against Yeah, Sega? I mean, for sure, uh, the Earth Spirit Rubik this is like more of an early game oriented support deal. Like Sand King and Shao Shaman, they skill a lot better, but uh, Shao Shaman, it, it's pretty easy to fall behind, and then you're just kind of this very, very slow, squishy, just very easy target. And for here, like Quap, um, she could just snowball very hard, but. Um, yeah, of course, come late game, Sand King Shao Shaman do offer a bit more utility and scaling. Better team fight too. And another very disabled heavy hero. I mean, these guys like their stuns, I guess. So. What do you run in the offlane now, Nyx or Sand King? Or do you just wait to see the draft? Um, hard to say. Yeah, I don't think they 100% made up their mind yet. But yeah, the cool thing about this Nyx is that he actually. It's not bad also as a position four. Um, of course, you would play him a bit differently than the Sand King. You know, with Sand King, you generally want to go for like a lot of harassment, you know, damage, or go for a kill maybe with a Burrow Strike into something else. Whereas uh, Nyx, if he's played at position four, a lot of players like taking Mana Burn level one and just spamming that on the enemy mid, which will be Cop in this case. Just take her mana down and make it harder for her to actually harass whatever their mid is going to be. So you can use fewer Shadow Strikes. With that, uh, don't need to pick up their last two. Probably they're awfully. Ash, definitely not the the bad rider already got banned. What else? Uh, Ash, huge. Oh, with Nick, wow, that is ballsy again. Yeah, well, as I mentioned, like there's a you being more early game oriented. They. Enigma is yeah, more of a late game hero. And the cool thing about this Enigma here. Oh, 
response. Wow. Okay, instant response. Wow. <laughs> they didn't think about it. I mean, what what uh, Tenor Raycon are probably thinking is that, okay, the, the three utility heroes, so to speak, were picked up for Wheel Wreck, and none of them are able to cancel a black hole BKB. And not many cores actually can do that. Uh, usually it's it's these supports, you know, like the the Warlock, the the Lich, the Venge, you know, those are the ones casting Black Hole. But Sanacer actually yeah, is a solid mid. And Global makes Enigma's life very, very difficult. I, it's, it's especially when you have a Sanacer that's that's mid, so he doesn't die so early. Try to catch him out. Co-op probably has enough items. Max. It's going to be really yeah, hard it... to play with Enigma. Uh, great, great pickup for sure, the Sanacer. Uh, because, yeah, Enigma is just one of those, if you have nothing to answer to a BKB black hole, then he's ridiculously strong. But if you do, then the hero actually yeah, doesn't fret that much other than it. Of course, it's, it's still a good hero, but... Um, what is kind of interesting, though, is that the Silencer, even though he scales quite well in terms of damage, it's still not really the hero you expect to carry the game for you. So I'm kind of curious what kind of safe I imagine they might go for something um, maybe a bit more mobility uh, because melee heroes that are you know heroes like Sven and, and Ursa and Jugger they're generally quite bad against Enigma because they can't really like threaten towers they struggle against Eidolons and Enigma can just yeah you just destroy them in lane and later on with a black yeah. pulse and later on like the midnight pulse especially midnight pulse is actually very underrated it's it's, it's one of the like highest damage dealing spells and pretty much yeah. So what would you like to see then? Like, you want Arc Ward? No. Actually, mm -hmm. not be too I mean they have they have options though. The thing is like they, they don't really like other than maybe a little bit of tower hitting, which I mean they have Rasta, which is fine. Uh, they don't really lack anything, so it, it's fairly open. But uh, definitely a scaling hero, All right? Phantom Master, yeah. So kind of in between, it, it is. It's not he's not as kiteable as the other melee heroes. He has a lot more like two different ways to close the gap. Um, really strong laner as well. So not for as much. Yeah. High armor. What else? So Enigma probably but, doesn't. Win. For sure, for sure. And I mean, I mean, just Lancer and Shadow Shaman, more than enough uh, kill potential against them. So that makes something free to yeah, roam around. Fine. And yeah, pretty standard response is the Sven. In so again, yeah. Notice the notice the, like this uh, for Thunder. It follows their, their traditional. I'm gonna pick a space creator of some sort in the mid lane. Ash is gonna play some sort of team fighter, but not too much as a scaler, so no personal back. Kind of here, like, wins your yeah. game with spells. Two pretty uh, sacrificial supports on his token on Mystical, and then you pick uh, essentially a really strong both mid to late game carry on Ban. It's standard to the lineup, but it works well against what the enemy has. Also, Sven, or... Yeah, Sven is good against Balancer in general. Not particularly. Um, Balancer doesn't really bother you. Or you be... You have Mask of Madness anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean... He matches up, obviously, well against Lancer, because it's, it's an illusion hero, and you have a hero that reliably clears illusions. But it's not that bad, because uh, Lancer... He doesn't really man-fight anyway. And his natural defusal builder, which is very strong against Sven, obviously. Removing that war cry uh, makes him a lot squishier and also makes him very easy to kite. Um, so we have interesting lineups. Uh... What would you go for then, now that we have all the picks? Oh, what draft are you enjoying? Now we also see Phantom Lancer is going to be mid, actually. Okay. What do you, uh -huh. what do you prefer? Okay, yeah, that, that actually makes a lot more sense, yeah. I, yeah. like I have to say, I like Wheels Draft more. It's just more... Like, like Thunder Draft is not bad, it's just very straightforward to me. I mean, they get their Sven farmed, they get the BKB, and then they try to win a couple fights with that BKB and end the game from there. Whereas I feel like uh, Wheels Draft has yeah, a lot more nuances to it, a lot more different ways they can play. Different combinations. I mean... Uh... Uh, Thunder Awaken doesn't usually go particularly clever drafting. I think their their power really relies on their playstyle in general and their execution. Usually, it's it's a pretty safe draft though. It's really even if you lose your early game for Thunder Awaken, you have an easy way to come back with Ben or Queen of Pain. 
not that bad. Though. The Earth Spirit yep. and the Rubik are also pretty simple supports. Don't take away too much farm out of your cores. Need to do Enigma. Just a stable lineup on it. I think Wheels are the ones that's going to be uh, more against... They, they're going to have to put up more effort if they want to win this game, essentially. They're, they're more against the ropes being able to perform well, especially in the early game. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the thing. Because they don't really have this uh, yeah, hero like this fan that's just going to go in and you know, hit the building, hit heroes front line and stuff. They they kind of have to take this more mm, hit and run approach to fights. You know, where they they poke a bit here, they poke a bit there. They they try to bait something. Like obviously, they cannot use the global until because uh, until the black hole is cast or until they can actually get the jump on Enigma. So yeah, Thunder's lineup is definitely more straightforward to execute. Are simple. You, are you afraid of the black hole a lot though? Is it is the global really worth saving, for, especially in the early game? Black hole, because there's other ways to cancel it, right? You have the no, no, in, in the early game for sure. No, I'm just thinking like, like when the enigma gets BKB and. Right, right, right. But uh, for sure in the early game, there's just so many ways. I, even the Nyx alone is just it's so easy to carapace and run into it, or carapace if you see is about to cast it. Yeah, or even just run into a midnight post and left behind. Happens. Yep. You don't even have to run into the black hole. You just. In that post carapace, oh, he's done. And uh, how do you think the Shadow Shaman's gonna work out? Because usually it's a hero that needs to play from a, in, above or front, per se, as opposed to the behind, right? He doesn't really recover well like you earlier. Is he gonna be able to get a lot of kills? Is Queen of Pain the easiest target? Seems like a hard kill, especially against Enigma as well. You have the Adalons to protect you, maybe not the best of guns. Yeah, it's for sure not an easy Shadow Shaman game because all these heroes are kinda. Uh, outrange him. Of course, when he gets uh, like later into the game, he becomes really strong when he gets uh, some items like a blink and or netherlands cast range talent even and stuff. From there, it gets easier. But the early game, it's just he gets hit by one spell and he's kind of dead because there's just a lot of follow-up down there. Um, but I imagine his job is going to be mostly to uh, sit around the, the top lane, make sure Enigma can't really come there, Sinus is going to free farm, he's going to pull a lot and try to get early level 6. And yeah, generally you use the, that Shao Shaman for the wards mostly in the early game. Yeah, the, the power of the, the Master Super War actually adds a bit of pushing power, the Thunder Awake. Well, they do have actually, but it's just not as good. Much easier to keep idle on to the game and later on spend item a bit. Whereas the Shadow Shaman ward in that regard, so you'll have that as well. And then later on the Phantom Lancer. Not really anymore. Depends on the build. Look at this. Already uh dual lane in the mid lane. Not surprising, honestly. Air spirit really just camps this lane. They help the this bottom. is pretty standard, yeah, for I mean, especially when since they added that extra range creep, it's uh just makes sense to have extra heroes there on the lane. Look at that. Nick Sassing going level once by Carpus, still rolling bouldered. He eats a tree. Is that gonna heal him up? I mean Dorla too, you're suffering a lot of pain anyway. Uh, triple Dot wanted to get the second Rolling Boulder onto him, but in one second has that Stormhammer they give him as well. Oh, he eats the Mango, he's really committing to the skill. Making sure Nyx Assassin goes down, and no Impale, so... Triple Dot, or no, sorry. Double Dot is gonna get that final <laughs> final hit against him. We don't think it's Mystico, mainly because Mystico usually plays position 5, so it's one of the stand-ins we have information on who. Yeah, but honestly, this death, I mean, sure, it's like first blood and it looks kind of bad, but it's... it's... Uh, it wasn't even Sven that got it, and kind of make sure that, like, they use Mango. Okay, if he dies again, on that, that is that's different. Oh, my Carpus. Okay, he, he saved his Carpus. Look yeah. at this, Van is going in. Van wants to commit. Doesn't have Warcry, though, to tank these tower hits, so I have to aggro to another creep. Earth Spirit's also near him. Estok is going to Mad Meng. Van already used his Mango, so can't use it again. I think that was a pretty hasty Mango early on. I think you want to keep the Sven Mango a bit longer for these engagements. Yeah. You could have just healed with clarity and killed the next assassin, especially once you see level one spike carpus. Maybe one of the weakest level ones you could possibly get, especially with that 0 0.6 second stun does nothing. Definitely, yeah. And as a result of you know the spirit being there at the start and it's not coming mid for the first wave, uh, the PO pulled a little bit ahead, and in this uh, Queen of Pain against PO matchup. I mean, as PO gets more. Levels like his uh, base damage increases a lot, and he starts really out CSing the Quop. And it's just really that f level one, level two, where Quop can get kind of an edge. So, with SK being there, securing the first wave entirely, it, it really sets PL for a very nice mid lane. Hmm. 
That's a that's a pretty good point, actually. Uh, do you think he's gonna be able to beat the Queen of Pain? And I just a pretty much a one v one entirely. Uh, wow. I mean, beat is uh he's not gonna beat her, but the thing is, uh, PL is of course essentially a bit of a carry, and uh, Queen of Pain relies a lot more on actually doing well on the lane. Right. If you if you go even as a as a co-op on mid, that's not really what you want. Like you wanna you wanna be yeah punishing the lane. I have the enemy mid. Right, that makes sense. You, you look for the domination. So and basically, preventing preventing the Queen of Pain from stonewalling is is already a win for Wheel. Point and, and yeah, the double damage the is pulling ahead. Yeah, I mean that was a great double damage. You Known as Leo Styles build also. No Shadow Strike. You can't really use it against PL. Pointless. And then no. you lose your harassment skill mainly. Scream of Pain's not that good. Oh, so, bottom. Go on to the Spore Sanking, dead. And now trying to kill Dota 2 as well. They don't have a Telekinesis. Uh, get away, fine. So what's happening in this bottom lane? How come uh, guys from Wheel are trying to sacrifice so much just to, to bother this Sven's farm? So he doesn't just get free farm in the bottom lane? Or do they feel confident? Yeah, that he is him? a bit behind on CS. So I suppose they feel like... As we mentioned, the PL is really pulling ahead on the mid lane and 1v1. So by the Sand King constantly running bottom, they kind of force the Earth Spirit to be there as well. If, uh, like, sure, Sand King can, I don't know, go jungle or something, and they can let Nyx le leech alone, but that means Earth Spirit is free to go mid, and then suddenly PL's lane doesn't look as safe. Right. Um, and if if we assume a 2v2, like, PL Sand King against the Corp Earth Spirit, I guess the Corp Earth Spirit is stronger after all. Right. So maybe that's their thought. Um... And also, it's not like Sanking Gank in the middle lane against the Queen of Pain, especially before ever kill her. <laughs> because first, like, with no range, it's pretty much melee, so... Also makes sense. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't really bother. And there's no need to go top, because the name has already gone jungle. Because Silence sort of yeah. you in lane. Actually, look at Mad Ming. He's been stopped by the Malefus. Third strike. They don't want to commit to this, but... You already can't really fight Smash in the jungle. Too late. You, you took too long to try to fight him. And now he's just fine. Perfect. You can't really harass him either. Yeah, that's actually one thing he could have done instead of going bottom to fight with the Nyx. He could have just sat on the Enigma from level one because that's when like Enigma is really sad at level one. There's not much he can do. You can like two hit Eidolons. With Kaisen um, yeah. Finale as well, that deals so much damage. You have to really micro the Eidolons perfectly to not get hit. Yeah, but now that Enigma has some levels, it's. Uh... Wouldn't be surprised uh, to see him now go back for a couple levels in Sandstorm, since uh, his blink is actually pretty valuable. And it's starting to look like there aren't really any lanes for him to contest, so... With some Sandstorm levels, he can farm up the jungle a bit. Like I mentioned, their support duo, I mean, both this Shao Shao and the Sand King, they really do need some levels and some farm. The Sand King especially kind of needs that blink. Um, Whereas you have a hero like Earth Spirit who doesn't need anything. Doesn't even really need that many levels, like... As we say this, he actually pushes the Nyx away. Pretty clever. Uh, no Spike Carpus for you, they even use the Storm Hammer to look as well, so you can't try to use the Impale. Ooh, fantastic Impale from Dota the 2. Might just get away, Warcry's still up, a lot of movement speed, man. Chasing him under the trees, Dota the 2, trying to juke best he can, has three mangoes, use the Spike Carpus, rolling boulder! Oh, that bug just got squashed by Earth Spirit, as in comes the Shadow Shaman, Derptor trying to get the counter kill, and with a long range Aethershock, he's able to, that's a kill for a kill in the bottom lane, but still beneficial for Thunder Awaken. Yeah, even the Sven actually kind of stacked the stuns there, but he wanted to use the, like make sure he doesn't get carapaced. Yes. The storm armor damage. Um, yeah, I mean the snakes keeps dying. It's uh. Is it really that all going to whisper it. Is, it? is it a concern to, that Nyx keeps dying though? Uh, considering he's still getting a decent amount of levels and. It, it's not really, especially yeah. because like the only concern would be if Sven was getting all the kills, because yeah. that might make him snowball a bit too hard. But it's actually Earth Spirit getting them, and even though this Earth Spirit has now three kills, uh, he still just hit level three, so he's actually behind everyone else in terms of XP. And I mean, money on Earth Spirit is not a big deal; it doesn't change anything. What he really wants is levels, so these deaths don't really cost uh, Will that much. Exactly, and you're also forcing constant rotations by the support bottom lane. When they go up top, they can't kill KVH either. So, yeah. 
It does seem like we'll... It does seem like they're losing by just, you know, watching the game, but they're actually having pretty good control of the match. Especially because, like you said, this mid matchup, PL versus Co-op. Not only did PL actually stop the Co-op, but he's winning it by quite a lot now. Yeah, now he's actually really pulling ahead. Yeah. And also... I mean, it's only seven minutes in, but uh, Sinus are actually being ahead of CS, so oh, I mean, they're pretty much even. They're pretty much even, but um, the Sven, like, Sven is a hero, you really want to... I don't know, like, around 10 minutes, you want to be at least near the 100 CS mark. Okay, Annihilate trying to run away. There's a Scream of Pain, finishes him off, actually. That doppelganger was not good enough against Leo style. Listening to our cast, he was like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach his Phantom Monster lesson. Meanwhile, in the top lane, though, they also kill the Sun, Sir Thunder, learned to pull ahead on these kills, and but in the bottom lane, they themselves lose the Sven. Honestly, there was just so many rotations <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. Nobody, you can catch those. Pretty clever. These are yeah, classic trades. I mean, supports go to one lane, leave their cores vulnerable, and then the enemy supports kill their core, and yeah. I mean, that's very common, especially in uh, the style of Peruvian Dota or Nene Dota in general, the more aggressive you want to play, the more you just constantly look at the supports and seeing what rotations are taken to see what is the easiest kill. And okay, Shackle from Derp Derp in the bottom lane. I think Dota the two might even get this chicken. Oh, Rubik. He's still the telekinesis though, tries to get double stun, but won't be able to in time at least. He already died. However, Air Spirit comes in, wants to get the double kill to avenge his dead teammate, won't find Dota the two, and only Derp Derp will die here. Honestly, pretty good trade by Wheel. They forced a rotation by Queen of Pain and even by Sven, so that seems pretty good for them. Even if they just got the kill. Yeah, well, uh, once again, though, the levels, important thing to look at. Uh, three and four for the Thunder supports and Sand King level five, Shashan level four. So. That's a Sandstorm. That's the usage of Sandstorm. Were, yeah, really like I mentioned, now he starts leveling and now he's gonna start working on a blink. Um. Yeah, should, should be looking at a pretty decent timing. He went for the Tranquil and Windlace, so really have that heavy movement speed for his rotations, like pre-blink pre movement, so he actually can get close to people. Oh, careful in the mid lane. Leo Style is being chased upon, Annihilate, losing his damage because of Fade Bolt. Leo Style almost about to die, rolling Boulder saves his life! And with only 10 HP, Leo Style under that tower does not get annihilated. Well, that yeah, pretty that's good uh... He was close to getting that kill, but honestly, even if he did get it, I wouldn't say that that's worth it, because, like, he knows the Sand King is in the jungle, sandstorming neutral camps, so when he knows that's the situation, you can't really go for a solo dive behind the tower like that. I do even if he... Yeah. Yeah, like, even if he were to kill the cop, like, like we mentioned, he was already leading in CS, so it's a lane he's ahead in, he's not forced to make risky plays like this, where he risks his own life to maybe get a kill. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you could have just kept himself, you know, farming really the lane and dominating the lane. Could have draw your PL, right? You have the spirit lines, which usually wins you the lane, unless you see any supports around. Anyway, ban. Uh, careful. Uh, I think they want to initiate upon him or maybe kill the courier. Dota two is indecisive. You see, Sand King coming by as well. There it is with the smoke. They stop the Sven. Burst strike also available, and the Quap comes in time. Global signs to stop her. The Ether shock finishes him off, and now the Queen of Pain is shackled down. But Leo Style wants to keep on fighting. The Scream of Pain and Sonic Wave to destroy both enemy supports. Or sorry, support an offlaner. And Mad Ming will just survive based on the lack of detection of Thunder Awaken. Yeah, lots of action in the, all happening in the Radiant Jungle. A uh, big point to note though is that this mid tower where Thunder is almost dead and the tier 1 mid is the most important tower in the game. And because the PL is pulling so far ahead, pressuring the Queen of Pain out of the lane and stuff, like that, that tower will go down soon. Uh, it's it's one of the strengths of PL mid actually because he just hits so hard, so much base damage, and when he gets six, like it's really easy to chip down the tower, constantly send those illusions. I mean, he is a pick that's, that's coming out a lot. Really. A lot of teams are starting to favor him. He smashed die in the top lane. Yeah. Uh, so we are seeing PL mid actually favored by a lot of teams. The lane domination he has, the fact that he can recover pretty easily, he has a good mid to late game. It's just a pretty safe pick, honestly. Reckon he's gonna be a, a top pick now that the international's coming by. Maybe not top, yeah, pick, he's but a common per se. Common, yeah, it could be. He's versatile, and the other thing is like it's, it's still also very viable, safe and carry. Just yeah. having that uh, flexibility. Uh, not to mention, uh, within relatively new ags, it, it kind of gives him a lot more uh, playstyle options and build paths. Like you, you can go for the traditional right click. Uh, but you can also go for this Ags where you just clear waves so well. Ags boost the travel and you just farm the whole map. 
That's pretty disgusting. <laughs> Many times this tournament, and once you get Ags, you don't even, some people even start to skip if you don't blade over Ags, just going straight up for that, just because the damage is so. That said, top lane, Dota 2, no, they're just gonna. That's one of the issues of Shadow Shaman, uh, just kind of leaving your wards around, right? You give a lot of farm to a team. You don't really want to give if you're already losing by a lot. Enigma can recover a bit from his bad lane, though he's perfectly fine. And I like this move from Wheel where they recognize that, okay, it's about 10 minutes in, Sven. You know, he got his mask of madness, he's gonna move into the woods, start taking stacks. So what they do is they TP their silencer bottom and they actually just take the tier 1. Because they know Sven is, you know, he's, he's been farming the jungle. He, they won't really, like Thunder Waken don't really have the resources to defend that tier 1. So they get the enemy safe lane tower, now they're able to really contest that jungle. And bottom. Just... <laughs> Tornado right, 2 so... went so close to tower ridge. And... No, nobody does, but Ban can't farm during this time, so it's still kind of victory for Wheel. As in the mid lane, another kill. Really? I don't know if Wheel keeps dying to the Leo style alone, pretty much. Oh, he actually, keeps getting silenced. There's a Phantom Man stolen by his stalk. They go onto the set and uh, Nyx Assassin, but he had to spike Carpus in time. They use the Magnetize, Impale is available, but it won't really do much to save this poor character. And that great steal by his stalk is, is helping him out a lot. Spirit Lines deals so much damage. In the top lane, meanwhile, Smash actually gets a solo kill against the Shadow Shaman. Uh, at this point, the deaths are kind of starting to... I mean, for example, the solo kill on top can't really happen, because... Why was Shadow Shaman fighting in Enigma alone at this point? Not a question. I mean, he could have just uh, got a manifest from the fog, maybe thought Enigma was tipping to a fight or something, but... Uh, yeah, and Lancer, I mean, he got the tier 1, which is great, but uh, at this point, like, dying three times in the process, it's just not really worth it anymore. And uh, yeah, Queen of Pain is actually... Quite a bit ahead of him now in net worth, despite uh, how much he was dominating in CS earlier. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the CS, you can actually see Queen of Pain still being quite behind uh, the Phantom Lines. Well, not as much, but it's 15 CS behind, so you can tell Leo Style just got up in terms of kills. We've seen, like, what, two solo kills, I believe, Leo Style onto, onto Phantom Lancer? One where Phantom Lancer got, you know, went a bit too far in, they got punished, and the other one where Queen of Pain just killed him. So. Yeah, I mean, this last one, he actually got lifted. Oh, um, uh, yeah, Rubik helped out a bit. In theory, it should be hard to get a telekinesis on the on the true PL. But... Oh, okay. That's actually where they can tell illusions. Rolling boulder to see what. Yeah. I mean, usually pros don't have that much trouble telling what an illusion is. Little neat trick, and now it's definitely a team fight. Dota 2 sees him. There's the Impale catching him out. No blink for you. And now tries to fight this. And, but the silence comes out. Global silence as well. And Mad Men with a burst strike is not going to come in just yet. Finally killing the Queen of Pain. Mad Men goes in trying to find Smash. But Smash still has the black hole. Use it just on a Sanking. Or the Spike Carp is not available. But the Impale is. He's been hexed down anyway. That black hole did absolutely nothing. And KV starts hitting. But Ban finally joins the fray. Has a no god strength. With Mad Men stunning him out, he might be the next kill. They even get him with the Curse of the Silence. And now they stop her spirit as well. Well, last word to finish him off. True Dots will not survive this engagement. And KVH still trying to follow through with the Rod of Atos. Unable to get the last kill. Very, very wrong time to fight, I think, for Thunder Awakened. No God Strength in your Sven and you try to force a team fight. Eh, question. Yeah, so the key thing there was that, uh, yeah, first of all, there was no God Strength. And not just that, but, I mean, the Sven was far away. Like, very yeah, low HP, low mana, and he was farming far away. Um, it, It's a bit of a... Like some good teams actually do this move where they push that tier 1 with 4 heroes and have the carry farming nearby. Okay, so Anok Wave, help, careful, Sanking, about to dive, and now the objective Dota the 2, Smash went in a bit too far, doesn't have Black Hole or anything. Last word just triggered, Queen of Pain manages to kill 2 right up in the high ground, but she's stuck, Leo Style, where are you gonna go? Annihilate not the target, but no, they kill Smash already, the Telekinesis to bring him back, Annihilate goes into the Earth Spirit, and this poor Earth Spirit will lose his life. As Annihilate just finishes him up with a Spirit Lance, now the Atos trying to save KVH as the Queen of Pain still wants to cure him. Finally, Ban takes the steroids, destroys Sanking, and uh, it's time for... I actually don't know who... No, we all lost that engagement, but by very... only one hero, really. That, that TP by Smash was... I don't know if that was to create space in the team fight. TPing so far was really risky. Yeah, I mean, just... Non-stop fights at this point, both teams, uh, it is still the Sven kind of benefiting from this though because he's uh, he's in the fight, but you know, thanks to Cleave, he really farms. And like, that's one weakness of this PL silencer support duo is uh, until PL gets, uh, he's not even going for the Axe first item, so they will get out farmed uh, quite heavily by this uh, 
Queen of Pain's fan, especially Sana, sorry, that hero really kind of struggles to, to get farm. Uh, he actually went for a first item Rod of Atos, so... Yeah, pretty early game centric. Uh, I wouldn't have expected this, considering how many disables they have. There's the Impale, careful, the Enigma, another power strike, trying to kill him down before he's back, but nope, Mechanism saves his life, and a Hexed up Rubik, nope, Earth Shock actually did, kills him off, Derp Derp, fighting the Spanish, shackling up for a while, a while, but KVH can't fight against the Queen of Pain alone, he actually is losing all his health to the Queen of Pain's damage, there's the Epicenter, final to the Sven, he's been stunned, last word as well, so much magical damage, can they save him? No, they won't, he'll die immediately, as the Shackles catches the Queen of Pain, Leo still has to blink away, the Silencer somehow still alive, Atos the Rubik, destroys the Earth Spirit first, and then finishes off the poor Rubik afterwards as Wheel get a four-man wipe, only the Queen of Pain surviving. Uh, KVA just had to die eventually to the Magnetize, but hey, that was a pretty good engagement anyway. Got a lot of intelligence before he died anyway. Yeah, I gotta say, I was questioning a bit first the decision by Wheel to initiate a fight there, but uh, I think that was a freshly picked up Blink Dagger on Sand King. He ended up dealing the most damage. He yeah, pretty got sure. a, pretty much the perfect Sand King team fight execution. Like he. Burrowed in for the initiation, then he managed to get away, step back in the trees, let the fight develop, and then he went in for the second round with Epi. And just cleaned up. Sinister, of course, died, but uh, here we actually kind of see some, maybe part of the reason why he went for this World of Atos with the Strength Reds. Just so tanky. Mm -hmm. He just sat there and tanked all the spells and made sure his team could come in to clean up after him. It does seem like with the Global Silence, though, especially against the Queen of Pain, there's a lot of your major sort of damage. You're able to kite them a bit. Okay, man. <laughs> no way, Sentry finally up. Estok stole a burrow strike. There's a telekinesis van coming into this kill, and yep, yeah, that's gonna be it. So yeah, like like I was saying, it does seem like they get kited a bit once the global science comes out. Queen of Pain loses her mobility. Sven can't use his war cry. However, you catch him out in a gank like that, it's pretty easy to kill KVH. Yeah, that was really odd from KVH because I mean, Sand King just died like two <laughs> screens away, and he's stuck around. So. Okay, Smash, look at this, mid lane, wants to go and gets towed to the two, and comes oh, to stalk from behind, starting. they never expect this, there's a burst, like, oh, surprise, Smash all alive, the mechanism at the last second, Smash come into this, wants to get a black hole off, not enough mana, actually uses just Midnight Pulse instead, well, they got another kill, that engagement, um, where you don't really know if Smash is going in there as a solo hero, or his team is behind him, really unpredictable, I can't understand why they fought that. I think it's the East tank, and, and he's... Like I mentioned, this this wheel lineup, it, it doesn't really have heavy bursts. They they need to, they have a lot of disables. They need to kind of like keep the heroes at distance and like heroes like PL and Silas, they don't really burst when you stun someone. They kind of whittle away to them. So when the Sand King goes down and the Silas goes down on the top lane, going for that kill mid was really just a bit too optimistic. I mean, they were very close. I mean, Enigma yeah. almost died to be fair, but um, that mechanism though just give him the last breath. Very useful yeah. on Enigma early on. I like that he didn't prioritize BKB so early. I'm trying to think, oh, I'm so afraid of the global silence and the tackles and, and instead just yeah. went for the griefs. I mean, having that uh, really nice Midas timing kind of allows him to, you know, gives him more leeway with his builds. Yeah, exactly. He's pretty much guaranteed to to get, you know, whatever items he wants at, at some point. And it helps your team much more, right? Because you're not just a walking black hole, which some meaningless become. Yeah. Anyway, Estok, actually, what did he steal Spirit Land? So it's a fight between Rubik Illusions and PL Illusions. Ooh, really good evasion of that Boulder Smash. But the Stormhammer will still catch him out. Don't TP in the low ground. They definitely see you. And he was not expecting Ban to come in, of course. Epicenter from behind. Kill Smash. He does have... He didn't have that black hole, so that's going to be a tool loss for that team fight. They want to kill the Courier. Can't probably... Oh, Ban. Finally murders the Spore Mushroom. Madman now targeted. Leo style coming into the skill. He has the Yule Scepter, so there's no way Madman can make out of here alive. Even the TP, he'd be cancelled. He's trying, you know, goes into the high ground. The Rubik actually sees him with the illusion, and that Storm Spirit Lance is doing so much work as Madman sandstorms himself before he dies. Oh, he actually gave the Rubik Burl Strike. That is. Really bad. Not the spell you want to give away, yeah. Um. But kind of all uh, by Lancer to just go for that solo kill on Rubik under the shrine. Uh, also, they didn't have their silencer right there, so... A bit of impatience. I mean, both teams kind of going for these pickles where they kind of expect the hero to be alone, but from what we've seen so far, it's been a pretty five-man heavy game. Mm -hmm. So... Does this benefit uh, Wheel right now? Is it the right choice to go five-man, five-man, or would it be better to just... Because they can't outfarm the Sven, right? But it doesn't seem like they can win teamfights either right now. No, they they need to 
one thing they have is, is a bit of vision advantage. Like they have this Nyx and they have Sand King. Like both these heroes are pretty great at scouting and being slippery. Um, again, like Thunder Wagon's lineup is very like run at you. At both. The stock actually so. missing the boulder smash. He's gonna nope survive thanks to the Sand King burst, right? And both of them will be cleared e easily. Two bugs for the price of none. All right, that's just really painful. I mean, they. Are you feeling the pain of the team of of Yo right now as they try to kill Rubik and Camp? Yeah. yeah and this good. this the uh, like they they kind of did what I was mentioning that they need to use their Nyx to scout for you know a, a favorable situation, but. Nick Sand King, like you gotta be able to kill at least the position five. Yeah, I mean it's it's more like the surprise attack by Earth Spirit was unexpected. They didn't know where he was. This kind of ganking without vision though. Like you said, they have vision superiority, right? But they keep ganking when the enemy team is not really in danger of their vision. They just presume. Yeah, not just, not just that, but there's like nothing else their team is doing. Like there's no if, if PL is like hitting the tier two while they do that, then it's quite okay because even when they die like this, then at least PL will be getting some tower. But uh, in this case, all their lanes were pushed, then... <laughs> I can no, see Dorda too. Can... He's just looking around. They put another sentry out. No, he's not going to be caught yet. Anyway, go on. Thanks. Yeah, so, I mean, Don't Awaken is just pretty much in their comfort zone. Like, Sven is really starting to take off. What is BKB? A bit sad that he used like the 10 second BKB there, which was not entirely necessary, but he couldn't have known, like, he couldn't expect it to just be two heroes alone. Um, but yeah, he got his BKB, and right now we don't really have a significant answer. Well, what they need to do is they need to stall the game out because now the mid game it's it's uh, basically all about Sven, and they don't have an answer. What, what they kind of have to do is just push out these lanes as much as possible, make sure that. Thunder Waken can't just group up five men down a down a lane and force a fight, you know, with their with their BKBs and their black hole and everything. Cause then it's gonna get really difficult. Uh we'll they, they want this spread out fight, you know. They want a sloppy fight where everyone's jumping in from different sides. That's good actually. Smash already stunned or uh, silence as well. He's been hexed, they can kill him in time. But Smash somehow still surviving. He's been hexed, but oh the Guardian Reef saves him. Nyx Assassin being brought out. The black holes are up here and they destroy two already. Epicenter a bit late. Already killed Smash, but doesn't really matter as he already used his block hole. And they now stun the poor Sven. Phantom Mantle taking away his mana and now just taking away his life as well as his stock is the next target of aggression. Annihilate following him through to the high ground. But he's not gonna go down just yet. His stock wants to survive a bit longer. He stole shackles, he's gonna deny himself again. Against the ancients i mean it's a style kill won't really help you out though in general and the guys from wheel will be losing three in this engagement actually as ven clear them out pretty nicely but they themselves actually lose to sven for once which is pretty important for wheel. yeah that was actually pretty great for it looked so bad because they committed really hard to bursting the enigma before the black hole and then they couldn't they lost much heroes but uh yeah i actually missed a little bit what happened with sven there I guess he didn't really get anything done with his BKB, and after the BKB, again, this PL with the Diffusal just uh, shreds through him, removing the Warcry. And now that Ags is online, so now we're gonna see this PL get really scary. He has the Boots of Travel queued up, even though he has Power Treads, I think that's uh, really fine to still get him. Well, Enigma smashed, impaled up, and in a very bad position, gonna kill him in time. Garden Grief saves him, Shackles is stopped, and he might not be able to survive this. Actually, Burst Strike, they go on to him, Smash, please, try fighting for your life, he's just in the jungle, the Sandstorm finishes him off. Meanwhile, the Sven is trying to clean up a house, they already destroyed Derp Derp, but they can't find any more important targets, and Maddening is actually gonna TP to safety, and nobody's gonna be able to kill him in time. Yeah, Van uh, popped his ultimate here, so they're just gonna go straight for the Roche. They... Global is up soon, but... Yeah, it doesn't look like Wheels any position to defend. Um, they did force out the BKB from Queen of Pain, but Sven saved his, so... Yeah, all in all... Again, kind of weird, because... The Lancer was so low, he was actually trying up, he was going back, and then, then they initiate this kill. Uh, they actually still end up getting it, and Sanking gets out, so... It, it works out. Especially, the, the BKB charges are the bigger deal here, because if both uh, Quop and Sven's BKBs get down to 5 seconds, then suddenly it gets a lot easier for Wheel. Because the BKBs basically get forced out by the global every time. And sure, you don't have global after that, but you know if there's no BKBs, the amount of stuns 
becomes really easy to to kite the Sven. That's true. The the Sven is kind of reliant on being able to get a good initiation from the enemy. Like you said, you know, the sloppy team fight is, really does not benefit Thunder Awakening whatsoever. The only hero that kind of does okay in a sloppy team fight or chaotic team fight. Sloppy's very. Leo style <laughs> it would be Leo style's Queen of Pain and to some degree Earth Spirit, but Global Science stops you. Yeah. Going. Don't really have that. Yeah, not just that, but he's he's really forced into this heavy defensive build, and, and that's where those heroes with the Mastons, the Queen of Pain, can't really play the way she would like. And it's, and there's no like his his item choice is fine, but there really is no item choice that's gonna make it possible for him to just you know blink on the back lines and kill whoever he wants, and because uh, there's just too many stuns. E even just the Shao Shaman, again, the global will force out his. Uh, either to step away or pop his BKB. And at that point, Wheel can take a step back. And when there's no BKBs, it just gets really easy to chain stun people. And uh, yeah, we're going to see this Rubik and Earth Spirit really start to struggle in terms of being effective. There is a force staff picked up on Earth Spirit, so that's something. But Rubik sitting at bottom of net worth has his blink queued up, but it's, it's a very, very distant uh, dream at this point. So hopeful blink there. <laughs> Yeah, so so this Rubik, yeah, he is just a a lift really. and there's not even there's lots of great spells for him to steal, but it's just so easy for him to die. Like PL can literally just uh, send three, four illusions after him, and he he's has to limp away from the fight pretty much. Well, what do you what do you do as a support still for for Thunder? Because you do have two. Oh, actually. Top lane. Seeing Sven going down? Yep. Oh no, that's an ink. Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. that should be Smash. He's always the one that's in that position. Anyway, uh, the guys from, from Thunder, you don't really, you can't really do much supports when your three cores are such resource intensive cores, right? Especially with a Sven and a Queen of Pain in your team. Hard to find your own form. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, they, they have to play with supports and not much like Rubik or Spirit, they don't really do any damage either, so they're really just there for the control. Okay, oh. for Rubik already found out. There's a silence of the two. Global silence stops Sven from using his uh, steroids just yet. BKB, and now God Strength is available, but he doesn't want to use it too early. There's the illusions. This Earth Spirit can even beat one single illusion. This poor Rubik is stopped down. He saw the Sandstorm, wants to survive this. They stun out the Sand King, and in goes Ban. He wants to kill something else. Leo Style actually finds Mad Meng, and now the objective is uh, KVH. He's been telekinesed up, and this poor silencer tries to force that himself to safety. He actually kills. No, no, can't do anything. He was fine there for no reason, thinking I might as well try, but uh, it was, there was no point to it. And Phantom Lancer, meanwhile, is the only thing left alive here. Black Hole committed, and Annihilate will be destroyed by Bond's two hits. And that's a team fight, finally, for the guys that are trying to awaken. Pretty easy team fight for them, honestly. They didn't even break a sweat. Yeah, he Lance actually tried to man fight Sven in the end. At first, I thought uh, we was just gonna, you know, force those BKBs, and I mean, Lancer was already committed to the fight. I half expected him to even just straight up. UT bottom and like start pushing a lane or something, but then they just committed so hard. Uh, I'm really not sure. Like the moment Sven pops BKB and and Queen Pain pops BKB and like they they commit, like the BKBs are the key thing here again. So the moment that happens, like they can be happy if they like trading two BKBs for a support's life or even just an opener's life. That that's quite okay. But yeah, then still fighting after that is just. Questionable. I mean, they felt uh, questionable for sure. They felt pretty confident. They yeah. didn't even commit epicenter those but Also, another weird thing. It seemed like they committed halfway, but not entirely. Thinking, no, we'll wait for the BKBs. Maybe they thought they could last longer, perhaps. On top of that, uh, KVH at one point really did seem like. I mean, you just saw Sanking die. You saw your other support die, and you question why is KVH still there? He has no. Yeah, it was actually quite. Um, we we're mentioning the Rubik not uh, having a big impact, but he had Carapace stolen and it being perfect. Uh, we all possibly didn't scout it out, and oh, KVH just spot it and just goes down. And the Australian committed, that's gonna be tower as well. Uh, they didn't uh, scout that he has Carapace, so he ended up stunning both the Silencer and the Shao Shaman, and they took so long to actually bring him down. The rest was able to come in. Now, Shiva's picked up on Queen of Pain, this actually amazing item against the uh, PL because obviously just not not just for illusion clear but like for control and it's he cannot play around it like PL is all about dodging stuff and playing on the edge 
Yeah. She has a massive radius, slows, and it gives vision too, so. And the extra armor makes Queen of Pain also. Yeah. In general, it survives more of these Global Science team fights where she doesn't have to dodge as many spells. She just tanks. Or not spells necessarily, just attacks. And. I mean, it's a it's good item, good itemization in general by by Thunder Awake. I think they've been playing a bit superiorly this uh, match. They know how the draft works. They went for a draft like we said was easy to execute, but they did exactly that, right? Went for the right items. It's Ven going for yeah. a bit of damage early, but always the farming power. And as usual, playing the four protect five they like to play works really well with uh, Ven lineup. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and this Aegis honestly quite crucial. Like the Aegis is what basically allows them to go high ground because. Again, Thunder Awake, and they want to force this high ground situation, and they they need an Aegis to do it because there's, there's no Aegis. It's just too easy for Wheel to either chain stun this fan and attempt to burst them, or at least bring him very low. Mm -hmm. And there's no defensive supports on Thunder Awake, so they can't really save him. Um, so he kind of needs to commit the BKB if he wants to like get you know safe hits in on the on the structures, and the BKB is getting shorter and shorter. So having the Aegis actually allows him to hit without using his BKB, and even if they commit a lot of spells, then then he respawns second life with BKB. Uh, but yeah, if there's no Aegis, uh, that high ground push looks pretty scary. Like then the next thing they're relying on is the black hole. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And, and that would not be an easy thing to rely on, considering well, all, the, all the ways you have to stop it. Even right? with the BKB on Enigma. Yeah, one kind of issue though worth pointing out for Wheel is that. Uh, Generally, this this matchup like this having a picking a silencer to counter Enigma, uh, obviously the one thing you definitely want to avoid is silencer himself getting caught in the black hole. So when it's a support silencer, that's pretty easy to achieve. I mean, he can even like just be in the base or be in the fountain or whatever, because all he has to do is cancel that black hole. But when your silencer is mid and he's actually not second net worth anymore, but uh, you know he's a core, and you're relying on him to deal damage. Yeah. That means he needs to be close to the fight, and if he's close to the fight, that means he's liable to get black holed. So and that's a bit scary for for Wheel because like their one counter, they they need to rely basically a lot more on the peel for damage, and Sanister can has to has to come in late because if he ever gets caught in the black hole, it's a BKB, you know, black hole. And I don't see how they can survive that. Okay, Nyx actually, is this another? No, no, just committing to God strength. And I think they can get a third kill. Yeah, Shadow Shaman. The whole supporting cast might just die here for a wheel. And that's all your stuns yeah. essentially on all your supports. Uh, Shivas gives you the extra vision and no way to su survive that. That's really bad for wheel because now it's, it's the point in the game where your supports actually die for long enough that they start being important. And. Yeah. Because they they're locked there for like fifty seconds, and on top of that, they bring all the stuns and all this team fight. The silencer and phantom answer cannot defend it. Yeah, we we do silencer to make the right play though before they even actually die. Like the moment he sees that they're caught out of position there and they're like getting killed, he's already on the bottom lane, pushing that wave in. Um, now he's heading the jungle, and in the moment, uh, of course, Thunder Rake and they want to run down mid now because they they kill three heroes. They want to force that high ground situation again. Uh, but PL is already on the bottom lane, pushing, making that difficult. Okay, what? Not even bothering KBH. to kill KBH. <laughs> I just saw him. I mean, he got a good Atos and stops in. I think they might even lose the Aegis, actually. Yeah, that's going to be an Aegis loss complete. Then, I mean, he's going to heal up, but that's it. Did you wait for the next Aegis to try to go high ground? Just wait. Wait up, no rush. Uh, yeah, I mean, their goal now is to basically control the map. And they can even take the Shrines because they took the tier 3. And start really choking out because... Uh, basically, the two heroes that can split these lanes, like I mentioned, PL is really, really good at it, but then Silencer is actually extremely bad at it. So it's really just the PL they have to worry about. Um, meanwhile, both Sven and Queen of Pain are, are great lane pushers, so the Queen of Pain can just, uh, you know, blink to whatever lane PL is, just pop Shivas, pop Scream, and you know, clear all the illusions, clear the creeps. Um, so, yeah, right now we're gonna just see like a Bit of a dance of like lane pushing, you know. We see now uh, Smash actually pushes out top a little bit, then ETPs down to the shrine. They they basically want to shove in the lanes, make sure that they can go high ground without, uh, you know, Risk. any threat of Rex being split pushed. Yeah, or uh, uh, Roche, excuse me, not, not high ground yet. I assume yeah. they want ages. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. Obviously, the more well, it, the guys from from Wheel don't have the best split pushing, but it's okay enough that you might not it. I saw a travel good speed. He's not. 
I was gonna say might even get axed, but or but maybe eventually in the game. Do have that kind of threat at all times. Also, Sven's really close to that level. Also. Might even I actually might even because from hammer cooldown, but it really does depend. Um, yeah. I'm personally I'm a big fan of that Stormhammer cooldown, especially because uh, the Bloodthorn is such a common pickup, you have no mana issues, you know, to keep spamming that. Exactly. And, Five uh, second cooldown is pretty big. It, it's pretty great, yeah. Um, but of course the damage is also never bad, like he is their main tower hitter after all, and uh, you know, he doesn't like oh. damage to go strength, so he's actually jumping in. Fine. Okay, this is a very Thunder Awakened play, just use BKB, waste, why not? Yep, yep. <laughs> Okay, that was... This is very typical of Thunder Awakening. At one point, I think, we'll surprise them, because nobody expects this to happen, because most people think this is a bad play. But, yeah. ah, we'll make this work. And then they... I mean, what kind of hurts, though, is that that was a 7-second BKB. Yeah. I mean, if it was already down to 5, I would be like, ah, okay, you know, didn't lose that much, but... A 7, seven to seconds. 6, it's a really big threshold. It's, uh... But yeah, I mean, you waste God Strength, yeah. you wait uh, BKB. It's much more predictable what you're gonna do now. You don't have God Strength, so. Not that easy to just say, I'm gonna take Roshan quickly. Let's yeah, see, they but kill him. The... Yeah, that's a bit of an argument for the damage. Did it actually appeal just TP down there? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah Nihilid's there. Is... Look at this, there's a smoke. I mean, they're gonna surprise him. They know there's no BKB. Well, there's BKB now. They know there's no. I, I think he's uh, he's looking to just uh, skip the wave. I mean, he has boost to travel up anyway, so. He actually picked up a Skadi, oh, so this. There's a smoke. Peel actually. Yeah, they have to kill. Look, they're doing a wraparound. Surprising everyone. Oh, that Piel was such a nice stun. Amazing. Rubik stop up and behind. First killed. Now going into the air spirit. And he's going to be silenced. He can come smash. He can't get a good black hole. Uh, Sven also turned into a chicken and actually stuck in his wards. They're going to shackle him down. They got the Sven exactly where they want him. Not with the shackles. Now that we can be activated by Bon. And in comes the epicenter. Does absolutely nothing as Bon tries to kill Derp Derp. Smash so surviving this using a black hole against the Nyx assassin and a couple of illusions. Bon can't blink to him. And Dota the two won't get destroyed in that black hole. Bon still has that TP. They missed the Impale, so many misses, but they're gonna kill him anyway. Eito stopping Sven down with the damage of the PL. Can they kill him in time? I mean, he's doing a lot of damage, but yeah, he's also gonna take even more with Wheel getting that final kill against the enemy carry. End up being a pretty good engagement by Wheel. Exactly like you wanted it, right? Chaotic from behind, wrap around, people coming from all directions. Hard to yeah, that was, that was very nice. I mean, the two man bro strike followed by the two man Impale, they just take out the supports before they can do anything, and, and from there, yeah. And, I mean, Smash is in such a, like, playing Enigma in this kind of situation, this kind of team fight, it's just so hard. Like, you, like I mentioned, there's just team enemies coming out from all sides. You you want to black hole that PL, but, you know, there is a global to worry about, and it's... And he ended up, uh, yeah, actually casting black hole on the trees, and then, like, Sven can't even really hit. Also, Sven getting war trapped is absolutely massive because yeah. the, the few seconds during bkb like the few seconds of free reign that he does have like that's the one thing that actually stops him being stuck in words uh, of course you're not gonna have face boots on sven so well, what are you yeah. doing leo style root it down they actually can silence him hug stop and leo style might just lose his life here last we're gonna trigger using the bkb he has to run away but the pl is committing to this leo style glimmer came top and he will survive just barely by the skin of his teeth jesus that was a a risky play <laughs> just walking in from the side instead of blinking or a variety of other things you could have done as Queen of Pain. Maybe he wouldn't want to waste. I don't know. I actually don't know what the plan was there. Yeah, he's, uh, he's actually getting close now to level 25 on a Queen of Pain. Now, here's an interesting interaction that I, I don't think I've encountered. So I'm not sure whether the Queen of Pain spell Lifesteal Talent, if that works on illusions. Because uh, if it does, then this Queen of Pain is going to be very, very hard to kill. How would it not work out? Well, regular lifesteal like, from hits doesn't work on illusions, so... Yeah, but does we'll Nocturne Core? Does Nocturne Core work on illusion? Well, we'll have to see what happens in the next fight, but uh, if it does, like, I mean, even just one scream, you know, hitting like, four or five illusions should bring him to at least half HP, so... Yeah, that's gonna be a pretty big turning point. Uh, he has Aegis now, though, so not like they necessarily have to wait for it. Uh, yeah, and then actually... Interesting that they gave it to him this time instead of the Sven. Well, cheese on Sven uh, makes much more sense. Sven will make the cheese. Yeah, of course, for the, for the ultimate. And the BKB but, uh, as well. Well, I mean, could be like, if Sven's the kind of hero that you might want to activate BKB midway, right? And go and then about to kill you, you get the extra second of BKB. Really useful. Now we see Sven actually is 
taking some time to think about that level 25 talent we were discussing. Yeah, it's... hasn't chosen anything yet. And yeah, okay, he does go for the stun cooldown. All right, I like that. Um, they could definitely use a bit more lockdown. And yeah, he's recognizing that it's it. It's past 40 minutes. It's it kind of you know we're, it's not the kind of game anymore where Sven can reach just the one v five, and he's gonna have to start relying a lot more on his other cores. No, he didn't even go for so... the build that was appropriate for five damage, right? Went for an orchid and skipped instead of going for a thorn. It could be a saw grass, more you sorry, a saw grass, more utility, right? So yeah, yeah, it's um, I mean he has to like let the queen of pain start bringing in the damage, and this is where Sven really. Well, do you really want to kill Madman? He should also turn himself up. Should be able to blink away, but he also has to blink. And that haste as well. They can't stop him. Oh, yo, yo. He holds himself up. Scared of Annihilate. Now they can't cancel this TP. Yep. Smash was ready to black hole. That could have been a crucial play had they killed the PL. Unfortunately. Yeah. Smash was having the moment where he think, I think he was thinking, if I go in and black hole and he just happens to TP the second before, nobody's going to ever talk to me again. Yeah, no, that's that's a risk you uh, yeah. can't really take. So I, 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 no. I that that actually affected it. Now we'll see. See if they destroy our them. Even without sixty-five damage, man. For sure, for sure. And I mean the AC like boosts his uh, entire team's push. I mean the, the Queen of Pain mostly. Yeah. Uh, we we'll be going for Mjolnir. Still keeping treads. I mean, he can pretty much afford the the full Mjolnir here. And having Aegis, I don't, I don't think there's any reason for him to save money for buyback. Well, last time they lost the Aegis, right? So maybe just play as safe as possible. I mean, if you win this game, right? You're only one game away from the series, and that puts we on to. Right on. Fair Fresh uh, 10 second BKB picked up now on Silencer. Oh, that's, uh, that do something. Oh, he's going for Axe. Yeah, that Axe is going to be interesting. I mean, Axe is actually ridiculous, especially against Sven. You know, we mentioned he has a Warcry, which, you know, can get purged, but uh, also went for AC, so high armor, but uh, one that, you know, the double pure damage of the Glaives kicks in. That's just. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't think that's. that's Sven's that going to melt. That important. It only gives a double pure damage. Yeah, and targets. I think it's more important that you can hit the PKB target with the Glaives. And yeah, I mean, fair enough. That's that's a pretty big deal as well. Okay. Either way, it's just uh, it's gonna make the sensor more relevant. And this 10 second BKB also means that yeah, he's just not gonna just get blown up by this thing, which the way it has happened several fights now. Oh, that boulder smash is not gonna evade it. Bad Mang actually comes in, tries to save him. Sonic Wave, you committed here. Annihilate being hit by the magnetites. He's stuck in the midnight pulse, dealing so much damage. Black Hole, Mark, I mean, he just get yeah, Annihilate. Might just go down regardless. He tries to fight as best he can. He's running away, but Leo's that won't let him scream a paint to finish him off. And he wants to get more Yos that are available, but he won't find Mad Mang just yet. Leo Star, second bling. Mad Mang, why don't you TP now? Ah ha ha, because he's chasing you to oblivion. Leo Star, oh, guessed wrong. Won't get that second kill. However, that's a dead Phantom Lancer, and no Black Hole needed for. No black hole, no Sven out, still has BKB too, so I mean this is a pretty crucial moment for Definitely like, like this a big to. opening. Yeah, he has to because I mean he's their main defense. Again, like as hard as the silencer hits, he like I mentioned, he, he can't risk himself getting black hole, so Okay, stacking stuns uh, a lot against Ban. Uh, well, BKB up, let's see. You don't actually have your axe yet, KVH. How are you gonna fight this Ban? He's pretty confident. Oh, stuck in the snakes. Pretty good. Now the epicenter also hits him. Glimmer Cave tries to save him, though. Guardian gives also healing up a lot. A lot. And the Sex Fan will actually survive this damage. Not too concerned about this. Still have the cheese anyway. Atos with a bit more stuns. In comes the Aether Shock. Another Burst Swag. Cheese, can you eat it in time? And finally gets it off. So it's not gonna be a dead spin this time. As Dota the 2 keeps on impaling. That Nyx of the Aghanims actually just surprised us in the teamfight. Was well, pretty good at high ground defense. Yeah, I'm surprised they still didn't commit the PL buyback. I mean... 20 seconds, and at this point, yeah, you like... When there's this little time left, you really don't want to use it, but... Okay, well, well they go on to the silencer. Uh, only boulder as well. <laughs> Alright, just I saw Smash walking in, I could just... Just yeah. walks in to the enemy base. No care in the world. I don't know if he's baiting or he was planning to get a black hole. I, I don't know. Yeah, I would have imagined they would just take the time to, you know, get a couple of hits in and maybe get the, that second tier 3. Because when the PL is uh, 15 seconds left from respawning, he really, really doesn't want to buy back. So 
you know, you can kind of just go for that, but, uh... Anyway, they, yeah, they get the first Rex, and now they're playing it safe. The, the bigger thing, though, is that all the lanes are pushed past the river, so now they have pretty good control of the map. And they'll probably try and keep it. Uh, Mjolnir is up on Queen of Pain. Still keeps the shreds, you know, just for the attack speed. Damn shreds, everyone knows that you... It's alright, I mean, if he doesn't have to... Yeah, what, what else? else I mean, what, what do you get right now as Queen of Pain? Do you start switching into pure, like, physical damage build with, like, a Bloodthorn, maybe? Or is it time for... Uh, Bloodthorn would make sense. Uh, he definitely needs some kind of mana item, I would say. Because the... The PL Diffusal can get scary. Right now he has just one mana region item, which is the use. It's not very... Okay, Madman. That's sad, King. That's dead sign. Look, Abyssal Blade, actually. Like that. Like Abyssal Blade. Oh, that, that's... Uh, I really like that, actually. Uh, damage block is just so great against Illusions. Um, I mean, he'll still get mana burned, which is... Uh, but yeah, once once his mana is gone, uh, PO will actually kind of struggle to kill him. 28 armor, too. And it just, uh, you know, gives him even more locked on. And in fact, if you think about it, Stormhammer into a Bash, into Abyssal, and pretty much has another Stormhammer again. Yeah. The amount of lockdown is uh, pretty crazy. I mean, on top and... of that, you're fighting against your separate users, right? Lion's not. Nice. Oh, you need Lion's stuff. Yeah. I mean, I imagine he's still gonna finish the Bloodthorn, but yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. Blade. Oh, no, PL, silence, actually, Glimmer Cape might save him. Abyssal Blade, no, coming down to the illusions, they don't know he was Glimmer Cape. Annihilate just tricked them, and Smash could not get his Black Hole out in time. He already uses BKB. Let's see, trying to aim for the Black Hole. Smash doesn't know how to use it. There's on Wave, actually just destroyed Shadow Shaman, but Annihilate's still alive. And attacking Leo Star by a lot, Radavados won't catch him. Smash goes in, Black Hole, on to three, he doesn't find the next assassin, but it's enough, and now has been stuck there for quite a long time, KVH doesn't go down just yet, Global Silence, time to counter an Ishi, but they don't have the damage necessary, Queen of Pain, going in, Shiva's fought right by KVH, the Epicenter as well, Smash goes down first, and now they go on to the Phantom Lancer, he's been stopped, Shackle to the Queen of Pain, they forced to have her, but not to safety, she's blown up by the Caustic Finale, and now Dota the two trying to fight the last remnants of these kills, Mad Men. oh, that's my Carpus, actually stops Earthspit, and this though, the two will end up finishing off this final support. Wow, uh, wheel really did turn that around. Really good black hole, but that's what you get when you fight against I mean, so many stunts. Yeah, the black hole looked amazing, but uh, Nyx, I mean, they went on for a good two, three seconds. I, I think just the rest of the team was a bit late, a bit too slow to follow up. Yeah, because if, if you do chain up with the Sven stun and then you see the, all the cops falls, then yeah, they can really clean the house, but uh. Yeah, Maybe, perhaps just a bit of hesitation, perhaps it wasn't really planned, as much as saw the opening. No, uh, it, it's okay to go for slightly risky plays though, because this happened at the enemy base. I mean, don't get me wrong, it, it's it's pretty bad obviously to, to lose that many heroes, but uh, if you're gonna make, you know, lose a fight like that, you wanna lose it at the enemy base, not at your base. Because, uh, yeah, now by the time PL reaches, they're almost all alive and should be able to defend. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Like, since lanes were pushed, you can you can mess up a bit more. If that would have been... If that would worked, that lock hole would have killed at least KVH or Annihilate. That would have been great. But we, we already see Smash sinking another level. You know, he's so fast at thinking that he's been above his team. And <laughs> that... Oh... Smash actually coming in a black hole. That's onto two. That's even a better black hole. But Dota 2 still there. They can be now activated. Abyssal Blade finds the poor PL. Now the burst strike stolen by a stalk ensures the kill onto Annihilate. That was fantastic. I, that that stolen burst like really really helped them out there. And with that, we all lost two other heroes. Sanking has no buyback, and the Phantom Lancer does. But you don't really want to commit it, of course. Yeah, and Sanking is a pretty crucial part of their defense. And I think uh, we all might have just underestimated just how short that cooldown is when you have both Octarine as well as the fifteen percent talent. Yeah. You know the the back hole is just one hundred and two seconds. It, it's so very very short for such a powerful spell. Yeah. And they also got cocky about the whole BKB thing, really. Uh, last time, Smash kind of went in with that BKB because he wasted it, blah, blah, blah. They forgot the Nyx Assassin really can't do anything against Smash if there's a BKB up. As we saw in that team fight, he didn't get caught out, but couldn't do anything to save his teammates. And now, of course, this is a free rush. Easy stuff. For Thunder. So who gets the H's this time? Leo style again? Give cheese to Van or Smash, maybe? Uh, I would imagine. So I, I don't think the anima really benefits from either H's or cheese. Okay, yeah. Same as last time. 
No. Same stuff. And uh, yeah, Leo style had actually a uh, slight of vice queued up earlier, but uh, yeah, now change it to the Bloodthorn. And I, I agree with that. I mean, the thing is, uh, between all the the kiting and then the the glimmer capes and stuff. It, it's pretty hard to actually nail someone down with a sight of ice. And I mean, Bloodthorn is fairly similar anyway. You just want more right click. Especially since this uh, Lancer now built a butterfly. Oh. I mean. And he actually has no Manta style, so. And there's no Lotus Orb, I believe, on. Uh, yeah. No yeah. Lotus Orb for a wheel, so if the real PO ever gets Bloodthorn, that's uh, really big trouble. That's true, the lack of Manta style would be interesting considering you have one Orchid already for a while. Probably a second one, obviously on Queen of Pink, it's a very common pickup. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with his items like up to the Skadi. Like the Skadi is really great for it, to continue to be able to kite the Sven, even when he's BK beat. Uh, but, but the Butterfly, I would question a little bit because he already picks up uh, the 15% of Asian talent, which is all obviously a good choice, but uh, at that point, like the, the Bloodthorn is not something you can't really see coming from uh, from the Sven. Still, though, the illusion has also been for invasion. It's not like you're ever gonna Bloodthorn an illusion. So. Okay, burst rag. You wanna kill an assassin first? You've been stunned. Silence. Sonic Wave even committed. And yep, that's a dead Sonic assassin with the Bloodthorn finishing him off. There's the PL lagging my screen, but uh, luckily I'm not gonna continue firing this. It seems like thunder. We're happy with the kill on the Nyx. I mean, they forced the buyback already. And you're gonna probably wait till the next God Strength for the next BKB. For Sven. I mean, you already have the ages, they're just gonna wait, uh, it's gonna be with you for a while. The cheese is never gonna expire, so you're, you're, you don't really well, play, uh, too aggressively. No, possibly wait for the Queen of Pain Bloodthorn now. I mean, I imagine he just sells his power sheds in his bottle, and then he, uh, I mean, if he really wants to be safe and also have buyback, I guess, yeah, 53 minutes in the game, that's reasonable. At least I would imagine he buys the Orchid though, because. Big part of the value, like he's he is actually having mana issues. He has a big mana pool, but again, if Yules is your only mana region item, you are gonna run out of mana, especially against Nyx and uh, the Fusal Peel. So, and uh, no, actually, okay, never mind. He just buys Boots Travel level two. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's interesting that he buys that. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I would have thought even Moon Shards better than that. <laughs> What's the point of that? Can't say, real. and especially because. Like it may it would make a lot more sense if he actually had an item like like Bloodthorn or Hex because then what what I would imagine is like the expected plays like let's say you know Sven finds the PL somewhere and stuns him you know and he can build onto the Sven and chain and secure the kill but with his items it's not like building on top of someone has any major benefits so I don't know. Looks cooler that little. We'll see if Leo's down and do without the Orchid in this next team fight. I mean, they're doing a lot of damage to him just with a couple hits. AVH hurts. I mean, the thing is, already has the Ags. And due to that, that means that every time Leo Style gets hit by Last Word or whatever, he's not just a... Uh... Before he was a bit vulnerable, now he's completely vulnerable. With Leo's of Wisdom. Yeah, and that's really the issue. You know, he actually gets lucky now with uh, Lucky Break and <laughs> finds a region. But uh, again, this mana thing, like... I mean, issue. Oh. They keep uh, just trying to delay this as much as possible. I reckon Enigma will go for the ultimate Adelons. Oh. Actually, they initiate. There it is. They find the Silencer. Black Hole onto two. Silencer will die first. And that is what we were talking about. He got caught out in the, in the Black Hole. It was easy to finish him off. Epicenter plus Burst Strike. Actually, Ban has a no more mana. Has to fight here without mana. BKB activated though. Queen of Pain still has the Aegis. And is fighting against order the two alone. Good Spike Carpet stuns on three. But Ban is still surviving all this damage. Burst Strike again onto three. But these guys are tanking it all. And they just can't finish him off. In they go. Rolling Boulder plus Boulder Smash. The Malphite is annoying. But annihilate a lot. And this Queen of Pain will finally go down. But she still has the Aegis. But she's already got eaten by the Sven, and he's starting to lose all his mana again onto these illusions. Queen of Pain committing Sonic Wave, they want to kill an Assassin, they force him, force to have him offensively, and now Phantom Lance is stunned for too long, the Pistol Blade finding him, and eventually killing him. 120 seconds on Mr. Grumpy Cat, a silencer himself, back in the base, can't do much to, to defend this, only Maddening is left alive, and Thunder Awaken says, let's go finish this now, Ban kills off the silencer a second time, and with a GG call. Wheel will be giving up this game number one of the best of five series, but of course, with their game one advantage from Thunder Awakens winners brackets victory, they'll be able to, or Thunder Awakens will be able to win this best of five in just one more game.
if Wheel is not careful. No. What can you, what can you tell me? What can what can Wheel do this next draft, or this next match that you saw? For, uh... Yeah, I, I think this is where they want a uh, bit more flexibility in Wheel draft, where they don't pick the yeah basically the, the three supporting cast heroes first, because then you leave yourself vulnerable to something like this Enigma pick, for example. You know, these heroes that demand a specific counter and forces you to put them in a core role, which is maybe not what they're very comfortable with. Um, so yeah, I'll, I like a slightly different approach by Wheel. Yep. We'll see what happens in game number two of this series. This has been uh, the Pro the Cup American region, of course, sponsored by XBet. Hope you've enjoyed uh, the cast as we have enjoyed uh, the game. A minute 56, this first game ends. We have two more game or one more game at the very least between Thunder Awaken and a Wheel. And we'll come back shortly with that second game of the series. My name has been D Swordfish. I've been here with Slash Strike. Feel free to follow us on Twitter if you did enjoy the cast. And we'll see you guys very soon with game number two. Enjoy some tunes while we wait.